I'm Asghen. And I'm Daniel, and welcome to Art Talks for Beginners. If you're wondering whether a painting is by Boucher or Bouguereau, then you're in the right place. Okay. Welcome. What is it today, then? It's quite an entertaining painting we have today. It's mm -hmm. very playful, filled with symbols. Yeah. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun reading that. Me too. So I'll start by taking us through what I see in this yes, painting, as we, as we normally do. Okay. So this looks like a, it's an outdoor scene. We're mm -hmm. in... Uh, yeah, maybe in a park or something. There's a lot of very strong growth and uh, the trees are very healthy. Yeah. Lush nature. Yeah, it seems very, it could be Ireland or somewhere, maybe. <laughs> um, we have a lady in the middle. I'm going to say lady because it's not a woman, it's a lady. Uh -huh. That's the difference. Because so, of her clothes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. I think it's, it's very, it's feminine. It's very, yeah, sort of in touch with that side. Mm -hmm. Swinging. And I see that there are a couple of other figures around. There are some cherubs. Um, an angel statue, and then I think two men, one in the back, uh, yeah, holding some strings attached to the swing, mm -hmm. and then another guy here in the bushes itself, right from there. Uh, I recognise this painting, I have to say. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it before. So you know so some things about it already? I know a little bit about it, yeah, but not very much. Not much of a beginner for this one, maybe? Yeah, slightly less beginner. <laughs> Okay, now let's focus on the story a little bit and read the figures in detail. Mm. First, focusing on the lady. What do you think the lady's doing? Yeah, she's... Other than swinging. Uh, I don't know. I think she's flirting, if I remember the story a little bit. Yes, that is, that's I true. I think between these two figures on the left here, she is perhaps making eyes at this gentleman down here. They're looking at each other, so yes. there's eye contact. Yes. Um, her, her, like, dress is... or up a little bit there's he's looking at that angle i think it's a little bit um obvious yes <laughs> she's a she's a little bit she's actually lifting her leg up yeah you see that actually she has thrown off her slipper her yes. shoe yeah and that also shows us this this movement this action of the leg so exactly. she just throws her shoe away and opens her legs up to reveal uh, her thighs or more you to can, yeah, the you gentleman. Can see. I mean, she's wearing tights, I think, so maybe it's not that bad, but you got... We don't know what she has. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, showing any sort of, showing the ankle in uh, Victorian times, at least, was very bad. I think this is earlier than Victorian earlier, times, yeah. yes. But still, it's like, it cannot be something proper for exactly. a lady to do, it's right? It's not what you do when you're... Exactly. A... You, don't, you don't show yourself that much to a man who's hiding in the bushes. Right. You also see that this, this man on the left hand side, this younger gentleman, uh, he's hiding in the rose bushes. Mm -hmm. And he sees this and he's actually taken aback a little bit. You see that he's yeah. falling off more or less with, with what he sees. Right. Uh, he's excited. Mm. You can see the expression on his face. Right. He's a little bit shocked and mm -hmm. he's at the same time, he's a bit amused too. Right. So she has this connection with this gentleman most mm. probably a love affair she's Some in, romantic she's in quite a strong power position though here she's choosing she, to do that so yes absolutely can, mm. the, the woman is in power in this in this painting mm. absolutely she's the main figure she's the very well lit one the in the focus, middle yeah, yeah the focus of the painting is is her actually mm -hmm. so then the other guy he is he's not just a servant making sure that she swings right that's got to be no. the husband Yes, right. he is the husband. But why do we think that he is the husband? Can he not be the father? He's quite old, actually. Yeah, yeah he's a bit older. Yeah, he could have true. been the father as well. There is, mm. there is something that tells you that this is the husband, but not the father. Do you see that? I'm looking for a ring, but I can't see it that much. No, there's no ah, ring. Ah, is it the dog? Yes, ah. exactly. Look at this little poodle. Yeah, if you're watching this and you don't know why, why a dog suddenly would mean that he's the husband, <laughs> let yes. me explain. That. Exactly, let the beginner explain. I'm a explain teacher that. now. Yeah, <laughs> good. A dog is a symbol of loyalty and uh, yeah, marital loyalty. Yes, physical faithfulness, loyalty. the yeah. conjugal faithfulness. Exactly. So the dog being there looking up at her, I guess, is the kind of... If you focus on this side of the painting only, it's kind of this love song to the to the wife. Then, yeah, yeah it, it actually, especially if the dogs are sleeping and mm. they're calm, they're more representing faithfulness. Okay. But if the dog, especially, is barking, is mm -hmm. in distress, then you see that there's something wrong going on right. about the faithfulness. So a dog could bark at somebody who is being unfaithful. 
Could be, or right. dog can bark in a situation where some un unfaithfulness is going on. Right, okay. And is that so, here? Is it barking? Yeah, yeah it's, it's so. leaning forward. He's, mm. he's, he's excited. So you see that the dog is representing the marriage right. connection. And also there's one thing interesting. You see that the husband is actually holding the ropes. Yeah. He's swinging. It feels like he's in control. Mm -hmm. He's in control of the relationship, although it's not the case. Right. He's not. He mm -hmm. has no idea. He doesn't see the guy hiding in the bushes. Mm. He doesn't see that she's opening her legs and throwing off the shoe. Right. Most probably so. She ha he has no idea. That's why it's he's... It's like two stories in the left exactly. and right. Yeah. yeah. And mm. he's that's why he's left in the shadows. He's in darkness because mm. he has no knowledge of what's going on yeah. here. Uh, there's quite a lot of wordplay as well. He's pulling the strings, literally. Yes. And but he's, he's in actually the not. Yeah. So the lover on the left hand side when you look at his arm, it's leaning forward towards the woman. Yeah. And this is always read as a symbol, as a phallic symbol, oh, no. a sexual symbol also, okay. representing their sexual relationship from him to her. Mm. You see that symbol too. So is he, what is he holding? It's a hat. It's a hat. Okay. It's, it's his hat. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess hat off, shoes off. That's kind of like the... Undressing. Exactly. It's yeah. not like courtly behavior. Why not? Mm. Why not? There, there are so many things you can read like this. Mm. Daniel, let's focus on the other things you have seen in the painting too. Yeah. Uh, other than the figures, you have seen some statues. Let's exactly. look at them. Yeah, I see it's not just the figures, but then on the on the left, there's also this statue on the level of the woman here uh -huh. with wings, which I'm guessing is probably Cupid. Yes, it's it's Cupid. The, no points for guessing why Cupid is in this context. Yeah, it's, it's very easy, I think. Uh, right. Cupid is the god of love. He makes people fall in love. So... Yeah. In with the this, arrow. Yeah, with the bow of an arrow. Mm. So in this love story, or love triangle, whatever we call it, mm, it makes complete sense to, to have Cupid in there. But what is Cupid doing? That's more important. Mm. Aha, shushing. Yes, he's shushing. So that shows us mm. that actually this affair that the woman has with the lover is a secret one. Okay, right. That actually emphasizes that the husband doesn't know, mm. so just be silent, don't mm. tell. It's, it's, it's a sign that he's giving to maybe the woman and the man and also giving it to the viewer. Mm. As a viewer, you should be silent so the husband doesn't know. Right. Is that normal? Is Cupid also inviting infidelity? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh -huh. Absolutely, because Cupid doesn't care about marriages and stuff. He, uh -huh. he just cares about love. Right. Whoever falls in love is, is not the problem. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about the marriage bond or anything. <laughs> He's a little devil. He can be. <laughs> but then also there are statues here in the middle just underneath the yes. swing you can see. That, that is what I normally think of when I think of Cupid, like mm -hmm. the little sort of baby figure with the wings and normally with a little bow and arrow. You see it sometimes on Valentine's cards. For yes, you can see them like this, but normally the small babies with, uh, with angels, they're called putto. If okay. it's plural, it's putti in Italian. Mm -hmm. These are little babies representing mostly love. Okay. You can see them a lot in uh, Boucher's paintings, for example. Some mostly you see them in Rubens mm -hmm. as well. They generally represent love or these nice pleasure-oriented feelings. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that all of them are Cupid. Okay. If there is a bow and arrow, then you can call it That's Cupid. But symbol. Cupid generally is one person. It, mm -hmm. It's a god. Okay. Putti is also just taking reference from Cupid a little bit and just it's another form of representing love. This one, the, these little babies with angel, uh, angel wings, they mm. represent a little bit of innocence, I think. Right. So what, what, when you look at the statues and how they're placed, the one that the woman turns her face to is Cupid. So mm -hmm. she turns her face to love. Mm -hmm which leads her into adultery right and she turns her back to innocence the husband, yeah. to uh, the yes. husband and innocence to these little putti mm, uh -huh. who represent innocence and nice things that's interesting and when you follow this line from from cupid to the woman to the pieces of innocence the statues putti. and from there you reach at the dog as well yeah the other one is, is looking at the dog yeah. exactly mm. it leads you to the dog and then we know that the dog is the sign of faithfulness mm -hmm. and you reach from adultery to faithfulness or from faithfulness you start and you just end up in in the love affair in adultery mm. can we talk a little bit about the 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 division between the top and the bottom because uh -huh. the left and right story is quite clear i think but yes. this, 
the, all of the story is in the bottom, and yet the top half of the painting is um, in colour so amazing. It's such an interesting movement of the colours with the, the light blue of the mm -hmm. sky in the background and then this level of green from the canopy of the trees, wherever they are in the park, and then the dark shadows. There's a lot of your drama in the colours at the mm -hmm. top of the painting. Is that something that's important? I think it is important in terms of the moment, of the period of this painting, okay. because in that period it's very important to express how lush and uncontrolled nature is. Mm -hmm. It is making connection a little bit with, with love again, in the sense that you cannot control love. Right. Love takes over everything. Okay. So is nature. Mm -hmm. So in these kind of setups, you generally see big trees, lush bushes, a lot of flowers, and nature takes over everything mm -hmm. because nature is in power and love is in power. That's, right. that's creating a parallel. Okay. We mentioned a few important parts of the movement, and I think I know what the movement is. I it's, guess you did. Yeah, it's Rococo, right? Yes, it's yeah. Rococo. And the thing I know about Rococo painting is that it's very often very floral, very flowy. There's lots of, like, the clothes here. Yes. Very strong femininity, very playful, and it's kind of like a counter movement against Baroque. So the yes, Baroque very much. has been this dark, yeah, visually dark, very religious, very powerful, impressive, dynamic paintings. And then there's been a, a need to have something a bit more light. And lighter, right. exactly. They needed a lighter. Uh, exactly. That's very true. This is a Rococo. And the things you read is, uh, they are all correct, because mm. Rococo is very decorative, right. very feminine, pastel colours we see a lot. Mm -hmm. So the dark colours of, dark somber colours of Baroque we don't see in Rococo. Instead browns, we see all these yeah, browns, blacks, mm. darker tones. Instead in Rococo we see more pastel colours, mm -hmm. like the, the, all these greens, blues, the pink dress. Mm -hmm a little bit lighter, a little bit paler colors, mm -hmm. because they used to like these colors in, in Rococo to just create a counter movement, as right. you said, the heavy uh, religious topics of, or heavy realism of Baroque mm -hmm. was actually killed by Rococo, which is more focusing on pleasure, love, lighter topics, mm -hmm. these kind of playful topics, frivolous, uh, frivolous yeah, yeah. Uh, relationships between people, flirtation, parties outside, mm -hmm. upper class living, yeah. these are very typical Rococo topics. Mm -hmm. uh, Rococo actually develops in, in France, in Paris, mm -hmm. and the period before Rococo happens is the reign of Louis XIV in France, mm -hmm. the, their big king, the Sun King. He has been extremely powerful, so it was a very good period for France, but it was very oppressive at the same time. Okay, like so, a golden age, but not very free. Yes, mm. not very free. So yeah. that's why uh, people got tired of it. When he died, his son, Louis XV, was the opposite. Right. He was nice, he was relaxed, he didn't care about uh, making the French Empire the biggest in the world. So that's why this light period began in 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 France at the time. Mm. Louis XIV take the palace from Paris to Versailles. He built all this huge uh, palace in Versailles. And mm. when he died, the, the aristocracy moved from Versailles back to Paris. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to have something more in the city and a little bit of a different pattern they wanted, especially the king's queen, uh, Louis XV's uh, mistress, the mm -hmm. head mistress, he has a lot of mistress. Uh, Madame, Madame Pompadour, she was wow. the main person who actually triggered this Rococo movement because she was a highly educated woman. Mm -hmm. She was sophisticated or she wanted to show herself like this. She was interested in literature, design, theatre, music, so many things. Mm -hmm. So she ordered a lot of pieces, a lot of furniture, a lot of paintings, sculptures, which represent the more decorative, feminine, mm -hmm. pattern, mm -hmm. style. That's why she influenced both royalty and aristocracy, upper classes, to move in this, in this pattern. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Rococo, we always see that it is for upper classes. Right, yeah. It's it is always about yeah, rich, opulence, exactly. thing, that kind of thing. Showing a high life. So the people in the painting, are they well-known people? Are they random characters? Is it like a symbol or is it something specific? They are actually representing a story from real life, but they're not actual real people. Mm -hmm. uh, 
They're representing the story that the commissioner wanted to have. Okay. The commissioner was an aristocrat, a higher level, upper class person from the French society of the time, who is called Baron de Saint-Julien. Mm -hmm. He goes to the French painter Doyen and wants, to, wants him to paint uh, such a story where him and his mistress are in this painting, like she's swinging and a bishop is actually swinging her. Uh -huh. But Doyen didn't want to paint this. He found it very low, a low subject. He right. didn't want to paint such a low topic. Put the church involved as well. Yeah, so also put, put a bishop. So he yeah. just, he rejected it. Okay. And he instead, he just forwarded this commission to Fragonard, mm. who is the real painter of this painting. So Fragonard took this topic and painted it as the commissioner wanted, but instead of a bishop, he put a layman, he put mm, a normal right. person, because I don't think Fragonard wanted to take the church, well, that was the church uh, yeah. make something that opposite yeah. the church. In general, when we look at this painting, Daniel, you might have noticed that it doesn't give a social message that, yeah. that as we expect at least. I would have expected that marriage being the virtuous thing, maybe in this, you could have had maybe like a, a face of a priest or something peering in like with a frown or something looking on yeah, the, not happy about this but it's kind of a celebration adultery. of the adultery in a way yes. it's more like a yeah i find yes. that a bit strange but this is also going back to the rococo ideas it's all about playfulness mm. it's about jokes it's about taking life not so seriously right, light-hearted yes light-hearted mm. that's why we we see these things in Rococo. Maybe you can read it as, as something that approving these kind of adultery or yeah. these frivolous things that you can do. But at the same time, I tend to see it as a joke on society. Mm. When you look at this, that also shows a little bit of decadence on, on aristocracy, mm -hmm. how they're getting really cheap, how they're not right. valuing real things in society like very important things like marriage mm. for example mm -hmm. that's why paintings like this became extremely famous at the time so Fragonard just painted so many scenes like this wives cheating on husbands husbands cheating on wives and this and that and lovers secret affair that became super famous but at the same time the counter movement which is going to come after this neoclassicism mm -hmm. the philosophers of the enlightenment era which starts at the end of the Rococo era, mm -hmm. they thought that these kind of paintings, these frivolous paintings are actually making art decay because they right. are showing the bad side of humanity. Instead, art should focus on nobility of men. Mm, yeah, yeah. Virtue. So, and, mm. Exactly. Mm. So for Enlightenment era philosophers, that was a no-no. That's the degenerative thing as well, maybe. Yes. Sort of, yeah, that, that you know, degenerates the society. And yeah. they also thought that art now is very uh, distant from the actual society. Mm -hmm. the, because the people living in the French Empire at the time were actually quite poor. They had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. We know Marie Antoinette and her husband, Louis XVI, were executed mm -hmm. uh, with the French Revolution. So. Yeah. This Rococo period, despite it's very nice and lovely and flirtatious and all about love, it eventually ended up in a very difficult situation. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this painting, which you might have picked up on. I've been trying to hide <laughs> that. I don't like it very much. I don't like Rococo. So my question is going to be, which museum should I avoid, or should I not go to if I want to avoid seeing this painting? Yeah, you should go anywhere but London. Okay. London. Wallace Wallace collection in London holds this painting right. in in their collection today, and it's from Rococo period. Is when is that? Uh, this one is Rococo is basically between seventeen uh, hundreds to eighteen hundred. Oh, a long time. That, that, okay. Yeah, that's a very long time, and it's a very influential period, a long mm. period. Mm -hmm. That's why we call it more like a period, not like a movement. Okay. Uh, and this one is from seventeen sixty seven. Okay, later uh, After, yeah, it's a little bit later in Rococo. Mm. And this is a very small painting, actually. Oh, we have talked about like super big paintings so far. This one is very small, actually. It's, is it as big as my iPad? Uh, a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. It's 80 centimeters by 65. Okay. So it's bigger than your iPad, oh, but compared to all these big paintings you see in museums, it's, it's very it's tiny, small, yeah. very small. Mm. That's all for today on Fragonard's painting, The Swing. Thank you very much for watching us.
Stick around for more moral depravity and outrage. And stay tuned for our talks with beginners. Thanks. Goodbye.